Hi everyone, today we're looking at module one, lesson 10. I can interpret the quotient, which is the answer to a division problem, as the number of groups or the number of objects in each group using units of two. So what I'd like you to do is practice skip counting by twos. You can pause your screen now and practice counting from two to 100. All right, let's do the same thing with skip counting by fours. So I'd like you to pause your screen and practice skip counting by fours to 100. All right, I can interpret the quotient as the number of groups or the number of objects in each group using units of two. So Let's look at our multiplication equation number one. So I have two rows and I have one, two, three, four columns. So two times four equals all together eight. Our second multiplication equation, I can flip these factors to say that I have four columns and two rows and I'm still going to have a product of eight. All right, let's check out division. How many do I have all together is always what I start with in division. So I have eight. If I divide them into groups by rows, if I look at this and think, okay, I have two groups, then I would say eight divided by two equals four in each group. If I wanted to do it by columns, I would say eight divided by four equals two in each. Okay, let's try the same thing with this array. So multiplication equation number one, I have three rows and I have three columns. So my first equation is three times three equals nine. And guess what? It's going to be the same for equation. That's supposed to be an arrow. It's supposed to be the same for equation number two because our two factors are the same. So even if we flip them, it's going to look the same, right? All right, so, so for division, same idea. I start with my total number nine. If I break it into groups by rows, then I have three rows with three in each row. If I break it into columns, same thing. I have nine together. I break it into three columns. I have three in each. All right, so that was kind of a tricky one because these two factors are the same. So these numbers are gonna stay the same. Okay, so a chef arranges four rows of three red peppers on a tray. He adds two more rows of three yellow peppers. How many peppers are there all together? All right, so I'm gonna use my stamps for this one. Four rows of three red peppers. One, two, three, four three in each. And he adds two more rows of three yellow peppers. So I'll change my stamp because it's a different color pepper. One, two more rows of yellow. How many peppers are there all together? Okay, so here's what we want to be thinking about. This is the distributive property. So I have four times three here, which is gonna equal three, six, nine, 12. Four times three equals 12. And then here I have two rows of three, so three, six. So two times three equals six. So I'm going to add my 12 plus my 6, and all together, 12 plus 6 makes 18. Okay, so two students equally share eight crackers. How many crackers does each student get? 
Okay, so if I make a tape diagram, I know that there are two students and they're gonna share eight crackers. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I use the fair share strategy there. So when I'm thinking about what I just did, I just did eight crackers divided between two students means that each student gets four crackers. Now in this way, we're gonna look at it a little bit differently. This time there are eight crackers. Each student gets two. How many students get crackers? So this time we know how many there are total and we know how many each student will get, but we don't know how many students there are. So when this happens, we can only draw one, one group at a time. So here's a student and he's going to get two crackers, right? Then I'm gonna draw another student and he is also going to get two crackers. So two, four, another student, he gets two crackers, that makes six. And I have eight to give away. So it looks like I can make one more student and give him two more. And that makes two, four, six, eight. Okay, so that means that what we just did is eight divided by two equals four. Four students will get crackers. One, two, three, four. So in division, you're thinking that what you're figuring out is either the number of groups or the number of objects in each group. And those two things can change, okay? Okay, now it's your turn. Try your best on the problem set. 